this is my second video today. This last one was not very much something I was planning on. I mean, it's something, but it was something that was bothering me or on my mind. I had to make it. But right now I'm going to talk about Suffer Cine. Some would call it temperance, some would call it moral excellence, some would call it wise action. <clears throat> now, there's somewhere in between these definitions where there's an excellent de definition for this Greek word that has no real meaning in English or direct meaning. In fact, you could say wise action from the direct translation of it, but that's not really what it completely encompasses. Because if you read Charmendes, you can actually get a good grasp of what it is by Socrates when he's talking. He talks about pancreation, he's talking about all these different activities, boxing, <clears throat> and what makes a beautiful technique versus a one that's not beautiful. Sloppiness versus uh, something that's fluid and it shows a certain skill mastery. And so, from this, you could say that suffer scene is a sort of moral <coughs> smoothness, or, in other words, a <coughs> character which has mastered a lot of the ethics. Now, when I say mastered, I do not mean in an egotistical way. In fact, there are many sources that verify that suffer scene is different from ego and pretty much you can't really have sophocene and ego at the same time in fact ego would be more like agamemnon uh, versus sophocene which would be more like let's say odysseus or achilles that or well, more likely odysseus because he's more interested in virtuous behavior while achilles he really didn't think it was wise to fight but he fought anyway, if I remember the stories right. <clears throat> and uh, he also was concerned a lot with fairness. So when Agamemnon pretty much stole his uh, concubine, uh, Achilles protested like he should have. Uh, because Agamemnon was acting on ego, while uh, Achilles was acting with Sophocene. Uh, I mean. And at the same time, we can say that ego would be the actions of Manlius who was very complacent when his uh, wife Helen uh, was cheating on him with Paris and through this he, complacency a lot of evil happened because the whole entire uh, Trojan War took place and killed many lives just because uh, he wasn't able to deal with these things on his own. In fact, he asked pretty much that the whole entire nation stands up for him to get Helen back instead of uh, handling the situation in a more virtuous way where it wasn't so selfish and uh, pretty much using the Grecian might for personal gain. At the same time, this now put more modern examples of suffer sine versus ego. Now, suffer sine in action, this is harder to say from a modern perspective than ego. We see a lot of ego that goes on in society because people tend to not really understand what ego is. And what ego is, is it's a condition where you, uh, everyone has, by the way, where it's somewhat, somewhat of a tightness. Unsmooth, it's uh, well, I should have said uptightness because uh, that's also could be interpreted differently, but it's this kind of thing that holds people back morally because they might be selfish, they are self absorbed, they're not thinking about others around them, they are <clears throat> thinking about their own greatness, their own survival, their own blah blah blah, whatever you want to think about. That's ego. It, they're not really looking towards self-cultivation well, or the good for others. Now, suffer sine in action, I would have to say uh, the best example of this would be if I were to uh, have to choose between 
standing up for a poor person who has uh, no home and uh, pretty much uh, spend a little bit of my day to help that person as opposed to if I were to uh, at the same time have the choice of going over to a uh, job and getting down time. Now this is a very complex situation because yes you want to go to your job and get on um, time because that's ethical and that's wonderful but at the same time why are you why, why would you ignore this benevolent this soul right here who has suffered the great misfortune just because you think you should not get your job on time now yes you would have to explain to your boss but at the same time since you're helping someone out, your boss would understand, and uh, if he doesn't, he's not a good boss because he doesn't want to see good things happen. So, essentially, if this is a suffer scene that you would help this guy out, then maybe you would understand that you know it just takes like probably a minute. Doesn't mean you'll be late for work, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> doesn't hurt you to help him out. Well, ego would be more like, I will be late for work if I help this guy out. You're putting all these excuses to not get the right thing done. But at the same time, this is just a portion of what Sufficine is. So Sufficine, to obtain it, you have to pretty much have a well balance of moral character. So, and I have this well balance of moral character, you have to practice daily every single virtue you can and try your best to conflict or come at every vice you can until you can actually smoothly or more easily have this mindset which would be what software scene pretty much is that you would more easily be able to look for the right thing to do it's a more hero type mindset but you're not really bragging because if you're bragging then it's a thing which is not suffer sine. That's more ego because that's going against humility and it's more focused within. Now on other people's opinions. Now people have their own opinions on this or that. They might trip you up by saying blah 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 but at the same time if you're being suffer sine do you ignore their opinions? Do you accept their opinions? Do you consider it? Well, these two are bad, so I'd have to say the other option that you would consider it. Now, if you consider it, yes, they might be right in this way, they might not be right in this way, but at the same time, something that might help you out in the future. To practice this more moral excellence and maybe find a way which would beautifully take yourself from a way which someone might find problematic to something more much more better but at the same time if someone's for example like with Socrates he was accused falsely of corrupting the youth of uh, worshiping weird gods that the state didn't worship and at the same time this falsehood actually shows that you really can't trust always what popular opinion says and so that's where logic and reasoning and epistemology come in and if you practice all this you observe things you think you will actually be able to have the reasonable aspect of suffer sine because if you want to suffer sine you need both the reasonable uh, virtues and you have to have the emotional virtues and you know it's like if someone thinks you don't have enough of this emotional virtue what happens is that if you're considering it and all you can actually whether or not that person's right you can actually tweak it just a tiny bit which will make you a little bit more suffering because 
if it's a problem, one person might notice, another person might notice, another person might notice, but that doesn't matter. If it's a problem, and you see it yourself, because like, even though doxa or a popular opinion isn't worthless, it's, uh, if a friend is concerned with something about you, you gotta think about it, and if you're, it's right, it's right, if it's wrong, it's wrong, it doesn't matter, but you just gotta think in the long run. Is this gonna help my moral character? Is it not? They think uh, you're not practicing, if you, they think you're a little bit on this side where you're showing a little bit of uh, rudeness, you might consider it and come at it with the opposite so that you can actually more elegantly speak without rudeness. If they think you are uh, angry a lot, you've got to consider it. And in that, you can fight the uh, anger and loosen up. If they think you're arrogant, well, whether or not you're actually arrogant, you might want to practice the humility a little bit more and uh, could, because you're considering it and while you're considering it you're also doing a practical moral action to combat this or that and in that you will be able to practice self esteem and remember or, or self esteem and remember this is the last point self esteem is not only a virtue it's not only a mindset it's something that needs to be practiced it's a skill set you have to uh, consider things. You have to work on it. It's just like uh, learning how to box. It's just like learning pancreation. It's just like learning a guitar, uh, reciting poems, it's something that, or even delivering an oratory speech. It's something that goes over time. You will not be necessarily self-foreseen in a day. You will show some aspects of self-foreseen as you practice. But, at the same time, if you want to uh, practice and get great self-esteem, eh, you will actually have to work at it. And if you work at it, that means to not be just concerned about the theory of ethics and morals, but to actually do the ethics and morals. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first video on my talks of a modern platonicism. Please like, comment, subscribe if you have any uh, concerns, questions, comments, link, or give me your comment in the description, or, or, or I mean in the comment box, and have a nice day or night, whenever you're watching, and as part of my uh, recommendations, since I don't have a single book of this, but rather it's in an anthology of books, I would say this book, The Complete Works of Plato. It's a really great book. It will help you understand a lot of philosophy. As Charmendes, which is a book I'm recommending mostly uh, as a Platonic dictionary to tell you about the Greek philosophical terms and what they mean. And as every book or and dialogue and letter and even the laws written by Plato. And it's a fascinating book because it can actually help you study and you're gonna if you want to uh, keep on watching my videos on platonicism it's actually a pretty important book to have so that you can follow along and think about platonicism and we can perhaps talk and establish a uh, modern platonicism and stop this superficial neoplatonism which has been uh, bothersome because people are practicing these little uh, superficial magical rituals whatever instead of actually studying the philosophy and learning how to uh, reason how to be a better person and uh, all these different sciences that are within ancient Greek philosophy thank you for listening Stay tuned in the next video. 
You're going to love it.